Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Surrounds with Dazzle Physics. In today's session, we're going to be talking about how to find the refractive index of a glass block, guys, and this will be the graphical method, guys. Okay, so hopefully we have an idea of refraction, guys, and we're going to work out the refractive index of a glass block. First of all, here is the equipment. The equipment that you need for this investigation is going to be the following. You need a ray box, you need a glass block, you need a ruler and a protractor. So obviously over here, this is my ray box over there. This is my ray box, guys. And here's my glass block over here. So this one is going to be the glass block, everyone. This one is going to be the glass block. Okay, and the formulas that you need for this experiment are going to be Snell's Law, which states that the refractive index of the first medium in one times by sine of the angle theta 1 will be equal to the refractive index of the second material times by sine of the angle theta 2 over there. Here we go. Okay, so now we've got this formula, guys, and we've also got the uh, apparatus set out over here. So you get a piece of paper, you put your ray box uh, on the piece of paper, and you have the glass block down there. And obviously you're shining a ray of light from the ray box, and it's going to hit the glass block over here. Okay? And the first thing you should draw is a normal. So don't forget the normal is going to be perpendicular. So over here, actually, let, let me make that a complete line for the ray. So it's a complete line going in from the ray box over here. And the normal um, is obviously perpendicular to the glass block. Well, obviously, in real life, when you're doing this, obviously, I don't have the equipment on me, but you'll find that the ray of light, you won't be able to see it within the glass block. So you can't see it within here, but you'll be able to see it when it comes out. So you'll be able to pop out on the, out the opposite end over here. So you're going to be looking at uh, the ray of light passing, let's say, here. There it is. There we go. Yeah, so the ray of light goes in and it's coming out over here. So in the practical, you make a mark, obviously, where the ray of light is going in. Over here, you just make marks along that line and you make marks where it's coming out over here. Okay, so from here... What is it that you're going to do? Well, you don't have the refracted ray inside the block, so you can't see the refracted ray inside the block here. But the simple thing you can do is this. As you've marked it where it hits the block, and you've marked it where it exits the block, you simply remove the block, and you take a ruler, and you just simply, on the piece of paper, connect those two dots here. So I'm going to connect them over here. So you've removed the glass block, and as you can see, it's now going down. So don't forget, you remove the glass block, then you draw the line over here. And now we can extend our normal out over here. There we go. Right. So what are we going to do in this experiment? Well, we're going to change theta 1. So don't forget, this one is going to be theta 1. We're going to change theta 1, and we're going to measure theta 2 over here. Theta 2 is over here. So you're going to change the angle of incidence. So maybe you start off from here, 0 and then you keep going outwards, maybe 10 degrees each time, and you're going to get different values of theta 1, then you're going to mark where it comes out, and obviously remove the block, and then draw the lines. And then you're going to find out the values of theta 2. So we're going to change, we're going to change theta 1, and I would like you to measure theta 2 over here, theta 2. So we've got theta 1, and then we've got theta 2 over here. Obviously, as it's a practical, you'll be changing it again and again, so when theta 1 gets larger, Obviously, theta 2 gets larger, so your paper looks a bit more uh, busy each time here, but you take the measurements each time here. So obviously, you're measuring this angle now, so, and obviously this will be the other angle there. So you're changing theta 1, and you're measuring theta 2. Then I'd like you to do the following. So we're going to then work out our next column is going to be sine of the angle theta 1 over here, and then our next column is going to be sine of the angle theta 2 over here. Okay, you're probably thinking, why am I doing this? Well, I'm going to explain it right now. Our refractive units of the first material, N1, is this, which is going to be air. And the material which it is traveling into, the refractive units of the second material, is going to be glass. Okay, so we are going to now look at our equation over here. We've got N1 sine of the angle theta 1 will be equal to N2 sine of the angle theta 2. N1 is the refractive index of air, so I'm going to put down N air over here. Then sine of the angle theta 1. And N2 will be 
refractive index of glass times by sine of the angle phi to 2. Sorry, it's a fit 2 missing from there. Okay, right. Hopefully you can remember that the refractive index of air, N air, will be equal to 1.004. So that's, but you can roughly take that to be 1. So we're going to approximately equal that to be 1. So look, this part of our equation has now become 1. So 1 times by sine of the angle phi to 1 is equal to refractive index of glass times by sine of the angle phi to 2. All right, okay, so obviously you're going to change phi to 1 and measure phi to 2. Then you're going to calculate sine of the angle phi to 1 and then sine of the angle phi to 2. You're going to plot the following graph, guys. So look, we're going to plot the following graph. We're going to put sine of the angle phi to 1 over here. And we're going to put sine of the angle phi to 2 over here. Right, so when you plot this graph, guys, you'll find that sine phi to 1 and sine phi to 2 will yield a straight line graph. Yes, so you'll get a straight line graph from here. Right, so the gradient of this graph will actually mean something to us. And we can look at it by looking at our formula over here. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a straight line graph. So once again, we're going to have to relate a physics equation to the equation of a straight line. We're going to write it down. So we know that y is equal to mx plus c. Yeah? On my y-axis, I've got sine phi to 1. So look, I've got sine phi to 1 over here. So look, on my y-axis, we've got sine of the angle phi to 1. And on the x-axis, I've got sine phi to 2, sine phi to 2. So therefore, I can write down n, refractive index of glass, times by sine phi to 2. And then look, we can clearly see that as I've plotted on my y-axis sine phi to 1, and on my x-axis, I've plotted sine phi to 2. You can see that the gradient of this graph of a sine phi to 1 versus sine phi to 2 graph will be equal to the refractive index of glass. So yes, the gradient of this graph delta y over delta x is the same as the refractive index of glass, guys. The refractive index of glass. Easy stuff. Okay, and that's it guys. So we're done for another session, but make sure you understand the practical. So today's task was to find out the refractive index of a glass block, and then we're going to use a graphical method to do so. Make sure you understand how we're going to use the graphical method. So here was the equipment that I needed. I needed a ray box, glass block, the ruler, and a protractor. The ruler, obviously, when drawing the lines. So all we're going to do is we're going to place the glass block on a piece of paper, and we are going to put the ray box uh, instant upon it. We're going to change the angle of incidence and we're going to mark where it exits the glass block. We remove the glass block, connect the line, and then I can measure the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction, which is obviously phi to 1 and phi to 2. Then I'm going to uh, get the following table up, phi to 1, phi to 2, sine phi to 1, and sine phi to 2. So we're going to calculate sine phi to 1 from our values and sine phi to 2. Uh, so we're just looking at these bits, yeah? I don't really care about the refraction on the way out. I'm just caring about the refraction on the way in. Then we said that, look, our equation due to Snell's law, n1 sine phi to 1 is equal to n2 sine of the angle phi to 2. n1 sine phi to 1 is equal to n2 sine phi to 2. n1 is, re is the refractive units of air, which is going to be 1.004. I'm taking that as just 1. And sine phi to 1 is equal to the refractive units of the second material, which is the refractive units of glass, sine phi to 2. Therefore, it becomes sine phi to 1 is equal to n glass times by sine phi to 2, because that's just 1. Then I said to you guys, if we plot a graph of sine theta on the y-axis and we plot uh, sine theta 2 on the x-axis, what does the gradient indicate? Well, look, we can relate our straight line graph, which we'll obtain from our results, to the equation which we've given before. So look, y is equal to mx plus c. If I put sine theta 1 over here, it will be equal to the refractive index of glass times by sine theta 2. And look, I just circle it. So look. On the y-axis, if I've got sine phi to 1, on the x-axis, if I've got sine phi to 2, the gradient of the line we can see will be equal to the refractive units of glass. There's obviously no uh, y-intercept component here. So as you can see, the gradient of a sine phi to 1 against sine phi to 2 graph will yield the refractive index of the glass. Easy stuff, guys. Okay, guys, it's another quick session in Sarasso Dazzle Physics. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe to get my channel going. Goodbye.